So I laid my hands on her. I stood in agreement with her. And guess what? That next week, she had that automobile. Now, here it is. I look around, and there's a lady right next to her. So prayer time came there, and this lady was standing in line. Every time somebody would tell her to come forward, she wouldn't do it. She said, I want Pastor Fish to pray for me. And I'm looking at her. I'm kind of in disbelief. The same anointing is on me is on the rest of the pastors. But then she came up to me and she kind of startled me. She said, you that pastor know how to get cars, don't you? <laughs> I said, what? She said, you prayed for my friend and she got a car. You that car pastor, aren't you? I said, wait a minute, woman. You got me all wrong. All I did was touch and agree, and God did the rest. I said, I have no power of my own. Come on, say amen to my hand. So I led her to the Lord, but I could see she wasn't sincere. All she wanted, that vehicle. So now I can see what Jesus said, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I tell you to do? Because a lot of times we be misguided of when it comes to serving the Lord. A lot of times we want the gift, but we don't want the giver to give the gift. All right, all but right. here's the thing about it. You lose out when you're not serving God. That's right. It's your loss. You can go out in the world and think the world love you. The world don't love you. The world love is on. Hallelujah. And the scripture goes on to say, he said, he is like a man which buildeth a house and diggeth and layeth the foundation on a rock. And when the floods arose and the streams came upon that house, and he could not shake it, for it was founded on a rock. A rock is hard. A rock is stable. A rock is a move. The Bible said, in Christ, the solid rock, I stand, and all other ground is sinking sand. You must develop a foundation in your life if you want to serve God. And I began to think for a moment, and I said, Lord, what is it about that thing called foundation? And God kind of took me back to my childhood. I want y'all to kind of walk with me for a moment, amen. And God began to show me about the three little pigs. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. The fairy tale about the three little pigs. We know that they all had houses, amen. And the houses were built on different foundations, on different structures. Now, a lot of the young kids today don't know nothing about the things that we encounter. Because a lot of the kids are looking at things, amen, on a different scale. I've never seen so much witchcraft and sorcery on TV before in my life. These young kids out here, I've seen everything from incantations, amen, from why, why to cast a spell on somebody, amen. We need to start watching what our kids watch. Right. Don't sit back here and let your kids be raised by the TV set. Right. MTV, XTV, and all the TVs are out there, and they're raising our kids. And you wonder why little Billy is so crazy acting. You wonder why he's doing all types of diabolical things. Because his mind is being exposed to some things that it shouldn't be exposed to. Young kids' minds are like sponges. They absorb everything that they hear. They absorb everything that they see. And a lot of times, we as parents, we fail to realize, amen, that we got to put a stop to some of the foolishness that's in kids' life. What happened to this thing about disciplining our kids? Here it is, they tell me you can't even whoop your kids nowadays. The devil is a liar, hallelujah. They tell me now, you got to do a thing called a timeout. I wish my mother had gave me a timeout. Ooh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Back in the day, 
Mamas didn't take no stuff. My uncle told me one thing. He said, you could either hear me through your ear or you could hear me through your behind. He said, which one you want to hear me through? But here's the thing about it. You know, there are children out there that are putting their, their mothers and fathers in jail. Yeah. Getting divorces. Guess what? I wish my child would get a divorce with me. I would be the first one to sign the papers. Come on and say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. But the kids now are not obeying their parents. Just recently, there was a young girl. She found this young man. The young man was 18 years old. She was 16. Mama said, stay away from him. He's no good. But you know something? She snuck out the house one day. She said, I got to see him. It's obvious the man had a nice pair of clothes. He had this nice car. It's obvious that he was doing drugs. But guess what? She went to the drug house with him anyway. A rival gang came along and shots was fired. The bullet hit her right in the head and killed her dead. Obeying your parents, doing the things that your parents tell you to do. My parents, amen, even though they were strict and all, even though they was tough, they loved me. My daughter told me one time, she said, Daddy, I can't wait till I get 18 years old. I want to get out of this house. I want to get away from you. A lot of y'all ain't faced with that problem. Amen. 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 Guess what? The minute she turned 18, I said, here's your walking paper. <laughs> she said, Daddy, I was just kidding. I didn't really mean that. No, you can go right now. That's right. That's because right. in actuality, children don't realize, amen, that they're really homeless. Right, right. They ain't got no job. Right, they ain't paying for no clothes. Right. What are they doing anyway? Right. I'm paying your way. Right. It ain't no such thing that you got a room. Every room in that house belongs to me. I'm not going to sit back here and let a child dictate to me what I'm going to do with my house. You ain't gonna be playing no crazy records up in my house, amen. And I don't understand, and maybe y'all can help me, why in the world would you spend $18 on a record that's gonna cuss you out? I don't understand it. You can go right down there on Greenfield in Chicago, and there's some people down there that will cuss you out for free. It don't take all of that. Hallelujah, amen. But the thing about it, I want to continue to talk about a foundation. And here we are, the three little pigs, amen. We're going back in time to the nursery rhymes. Now, we know that the first pig's house was made out of straw. The winds came, amen. And we're going to say that the winds was the world, the flesh, and the devil. And the winds came, and all of a sudden, it began to blow on the house that was made out of straw. That house failed. Why? Because that house was not on a sure foundation. And then all of a sudden, amen, the second pig came along. And the world, the flesh, and the devil of the winds came against that house. And guess what? Though that structure was made out of wood, amen, there are a thing called termites. And the termites begin to eat away from that wood. And the next thing you know, that house began to crumble. But that's the same way that the devil wants to come against us. The Bible said that it's the little foxes that destroy the vine. The devil do not come at you all at one time, but he wants a spirit of compromise to begin to rule and reign in your life. Oh yeah, it's all right to sip a little bit. It's all right to kind of tip a little bit. Oh, I know that I'm married, but what's wrong with having Millie over here? What's wrong with having a little Susie over here? And the next day you know you'll be out there in the world. The next day you know the devil will make a fool out of you and have you be worse than what you was from the beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot serve two masters. The Bible says that. You either love one and 
hate the other, or you even cleave to one and cleave to the other. In 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, 11 verse, it says, for no other foundation can no man lay than that lay of Christ. How many of you got houses out there? Just about everybody in here got a house, amen. Have you ever noticed that that house is seen to deteriorate every day? It seems like the more money you put it in, the more money you have to put in, and it's a constant ordeal. But why is it? You would think that these houses would last a lifetime, but that's not the case. There's not a house that I can think of in the city of Detroit that's over 100 years old. And if it is, it's kind of rare. But think about it for a minute, beloved. The houses overseas, over in Egypt, the great pyramids that they built have been there even before Christ was born on this earth, hallelujah. They're standing for one reason, because there is a foundation placed on the inside of it. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. I want to kind of think for a moment, amen. I am a builder by tree. A lot of the stuff around here, the sound booth, this over here in the back in the back, God has blessed me to build this stuff. I love to build. I love to take my hands, amen, and use the gifts and talents that God has given me. And I begin to think for a moment, and be kind of patient with me. I said, if I was to build a house, who would I get to help me build that house? There's a lot of great builders out there, amen, but who would I get? And I thought about it for a moment, and I said, what if I could get Jesus? to help me build that house? Yes. What if I could get the King of Kings? What if I could get the Lord of Lords? Yes. What if I could get that great I Am to come help me build this house? I said, what kind of house would it be? And I thought about for a minute, amen. For one thing, I know that the house would be not crooked because the God we serve do everything on the straight and on the narrow. I know that the house that he built will be a house that has a sure foundation. And I said to myself, how many rooms would be in that house? And I said, well, God would probably give me three rooms. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. I will say amen, somebody. And I said that that first room that God gave me would be a room of praise, a room of worship, yes. a room where I could glorify God. Yes. But you know something? A lot of us have these same rooms in our house. But you know something? A lot of times we don't spend the time to worship God. We don't spend the time to praise God. The Bible said that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. But a lot of times we say to ourselves, I got things to do. I got places to go. I got people to see. And the time that we should be spending with God, we spend on other things. Oh yeah, Lord, I got to do other things. America got talent kind of come on. I got to see that. Oh yeah, I got to see the other programs. And by the end of the day, we spend no time at all with God Almighty. And then a lot of time, we pe put people in the place of praising God. There are men, you women out there, that can come in your life and rob you, amen, of the presence, amen, and the praise that you have for God. I want to talk to the women for a minute, amen. And it kind of bothered me sometimes. It kind of bothered me, amen, when I see women out there, lovely women, amen, you know, get men and don't have a connection or commitment with them. When I met my wife, amen, three weeks later, I was asking her to marry me. Now, I know that may sound a little strange to you out there today, amen, but if a man truly loves you, then why would he wait? Why would you wait five years to tell somebody, 
I want to marry you. Why would you wait 10 years to tell somebody now I'm in love with you? Because time passes by. You look around and your whole life is over with. Oh yeah, you may have that hourglass figure now, but that hourglass figure can turn into an hour if you don't reach it. That's right, that's right, that's right. You got to be mindful of yourself. I want to share with you two things. I want to share with you about love and about lust. A man can either love you or a man can either lust you. Love is a given spirit, amen. Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. By the other hand, lust is a selfish, self-centered spirit that all it cares about is me, myself, and I. And a lot of times women would grab hold of the guys just like that. They don't love you. All they love is what they can get from you. And you'll look around and your whole life is gone. You'll look around and the things that you so desire to do is not there anymore. You'll look around and the things have passed you by. Don't let nobody, hear me women and hear me well, rob you of the blessing that God wants to give you. You are not just merchandise. You are created for God's own, I mean for the, for the Lord and for the pleasure, amen, that God has given unto you. I look at women as a treasure. I look at them as somebody to be loved, somebody to be nurtured, somebody to have somebody to love them. There must be room in your life for praise. There must be in your room in your life for pleasure when it comes to serving God. Now, in the next room of that house, should be a room of repentance. And that's something that we all need. I don't know about you, but sometimes people get on my last nerve. You ever had somebody run in front of you? You driving down the street, and all of a sudden, they run in front of you. Now, not, a lot of y'all I know say, well, praise the Lord, glory to God, let me pray for you, thank you, Jesus. But for them that don't say that, amen. For them, even though they've been saved, amen. Even though the Spirit of God is upon them, even though they've been buried with Christ, sometimes that old man can come up. Sometimes you can say a few things, amen, that are not on a godly nature, amen. Sometimes you can look at people and you say, I sure would like to do some things to you. But praise be unto God, who always tries us to conquer, always calls us to conquer in Christ Jesus. And the last thing I want to talk about, amen, is repentance. Because a lot of times, our blessings is tied up in the way we repent when it comes to people. The devil wants to rob you of the things that God wants to bless you with. You say, well, Pastor Fitz, you don't know what that person done to me. You don't know all the pain and the suffering that he put in my life. You don't know what he did to me just the other day. But the thing about it, you don't realize the things that they done to Christ. Christ was beaten with a whip of nine tails. Nails were stuck into his hand and to his feet. And then after all these things that happened to him, he said one thing, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. The scripture says, amen. If we cannot forgive men of their trespasses, neither can our heavenly Father forgive us. But it's the devil's job to say things about you, to tell you you ain't saved, to tell you you're not fit for the kingdom of God. The Bible says that the devil is an accuser of the brother. He's talking about you. He's lying about you. He's saying all manner of things about you. But guess what? 
It's time for you to start saying some things about him. That's right. It's That's time right. for you to start letting that devil know that God kicked him out of heaven. That's amen. Right. Right. It's time to start letting that devil know, amen, that you have the power to bind and rebuke. That's it's right. time to let you know that devil know that he went, Jesus went down to hell and took the he kills, keys of death, hell, and the grave away from him and set captivity free. Yes. You're more than a conqueror. And I want to close on this note, amen. And it's taken out of Revelations, amen. The 21st chapter, the 6th verse, and it reads as follows. And he said unto me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that the thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He said, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. I want everybody to stand to their feet.